right, we're welcoming in team number 3847 Spectrum to the Open Alliance show, one of the founding teams here and been doing a fantastic job, of course, with their build blogs. And uh, we're going to be checking out some of their progress here. I know a lot of uh, CAD design and Obrey will be going through. And welcome back, uh, Alan and Felipe from the team. And do you mind just reintroducing yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team. Sure. I'm Alan Gregory. I'm the head coach for Spectrum. I handle managing all the students as we're designing the robot. And I also drive coach as well. Uh, hi, I'm Felipe. Um, I designed the launcher subsystem this year, and I'm the driver. Uh, and I'm also good at using the lathe. What? And I heard you're the lathe, the lathe overlord. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, yes, that is correct. I <laughs> Might be self-appointed title, oh. but that's okay. So, well, well, we welcome <laughs> you uh, back on, and uh, I know we got a lot to talk about. We're going to bring up your CAD here uh, in just a moment, but uh, give us a real quick, uh, uh, bring us up to speed where you've been at since the last time, and then, of course, we'll jump into things. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Striker. Striker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state of the art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Striker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Yeah, so we've basically been moving from the prototype stage into getting everything designed into CAD. Um, we had a few different prototypes. I think we had the launcher prototype just about ready the last time we were on the show. And so we got that all dialed in, um, been doing some more stuff on the climber, but largely it's been a lot of CAD for the last week, week and a half, um, and just getting that fully finished out. Okay. So what have, so, uh, as you guys have been evolving, cause we, you know, this, I think the third check-in with your team, what are, what are some things that have changed from your design or assumptions from, you know, the week one or, or, you know, week two early in the season? Is there anything that you've learned that has influenced your design at this point? Um, I think one of the biggest changes is that we originally thought a turret was basically necessary on a robot, but um, uh, I don't know if you can see in our CAD, but we don't have a turret anymore. Um, we kind of realized that we're not really going to be making a lot of those deep shots anyways to where we have to, like, have our turret. Like, we can always just drive back to closer to the goal. And if we're driving back to the goal, we have time to spin or turn around since we're swerved anyways. Um, so that's one of the biggest changes we've had. All right. So where? So so you say you're 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 talking more about you know the more close shots up into the goal. So what's your what's your current um, thoughts on your shooter range? Uh, we like the shots in the in the um, shoot. I'm tarmac. working on this um, the tarmac. Thank you. Like on the tarmac line is kind of like a solid area i guess yeah so that, that's kind of our initial play is that if our bumpers are intersecting the tarmac line like the outer line that's our goal is to be able to make that shot every time so that's going to basically be what our plan is going into our first event um to have that amount of range and then if the game allows it and we can start scooting back we will we kind of designed the hood to allow us a little bit more um, but that's what our initial plan is right now well let's go ahead and hop into your cad that you have here we'll kind of show that off and just tell us about some of the features and uh, potential capabilities, what your robot's looking like. Sure, we can start down. Do you want to talk about the drivetrain a little bit, Felipe? So we can start at the bottom. Sure, um, so we're running MK4 Swerve this year, uh, and we have like the inverted version, as you can see. Um, so we have like, does that we have like room for like the intake on top of it and the climber on the other side? Um, yeah, I guess that's it for drivetrain stuff. Um, yeah, relatively simple drivetrain. It is a little weird that we have partially almost like a mid pan. So there's a little bit of room underneath. So we have the compressor down there. The battery seat's a little under. We may mount more stuff down there, but we didn't want to go full brain pan um, just because we like still being able to access the electrical without flipping the robot. Um, moving over to subsystem two is intake for us. Um, and that's where it gets a little bit weird. So this definitely changed quite a bit this year too. Um, we were originally planning to do kind of something similar to a lot of people where you have like the three rollers and it sticks out pretty far. Um, but we ended up changing it back to something similar to like our 2019 robot that has a single roller deploy and it sort of moves with the ball. 
So at the beginning of the match, we'll have this kicker bar that folds down when the intake gets deployed. Then as the intake comes down, um, this bar is sprung down behind it. And so it'll flip as well. And so this is kind of our intake configuration. And so there's only the single intake roller that's actually out. Um, everything on this, the um, the designers of this substance are trying to make it to where it's super robust. We can run it into walls. Not everything breaks. It's two stacked pairs of polycarbon both sides um, with some standoffs. It has the wedge in the front. So it's, ideally, if we run into a wall, it should try to drive itself up already. Um, and then this roller is actually part of our ball path and is driven here. So this will stay out on top of our bumper the entire match. So when the intake retracts, it actually comes over this roller. Um, so almost like the second roll of our intake isn't actually mounted on our intake. It's mounted on the robot frame itself. Uh, Got it. That's pr pretty pretty interesting uh, design. But uh, I think uh, I think there will be a lot of teams this year that uh, learn how uh, flimsy intakes end up disconnected from their robots, um, at least in uh, week one. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we we're trying to avoid. So we didn't want to have like a lot of the four bar intakes you see have all the pivots on the outside. There's a lot of just places where the polycarb can potentially crack and get damaged. We didn't want any of that. So this has the bolt spots and everything is bolted and stiff. Um, everything we do on our robot is whenever we can, they're all dead axles. So none of this is hex shaft. So this tube running through the inside of here, I don't know if I can click on it. This tube running through the inside of here is just a seven eighths aluminum tube with bolts on the inside, that part doesn't spin. So only the roller actually spins on it. So that adds a lot of stiffness. Um, and that's the same way that all of these rollers are constructed. Um, Felipe, do you wanna talk about the going up into the ball path and then into your into the launcher that you have designed? I wanna grab a real quick question from chat if you don't oh. mind. Uh, Olazola 5818 asking uh, from, from their words, does the kicker stay deployed? Yes, yeah, as soon as this comes down at the beginning of the match, it's down the whole time. So it basically latches up this has not been tested. We need to get, this will be iterated a lot, but it basically has a little latch here that'll sit on this bar at the front of the match. And then the intake just shoves it down and it stays down the whole match. But the, the intake itself is, is is retractable, right? You have the pneumatic Correct. and the pistons yeah. on that? Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, so there's pneumatics right here that'll fold this up and down whenever we need to. So I guess, I guess the ask on that is that you're developing the intake where you, you want to be able to take hits and potentially stay down and stuff, right? Do you do you actually see yourself retracting that intake during a match at all? Um, That is a good question. The goal is when we're on offense, no. So when we're doing anything when we're playing with the balls and we're trying to score, we'll probably keep the intake down the whole time. If we need to go, when we're going to like climb and things, we want to be able to suck it up and retract it to basically take up less room into the hangar. There's also just going to be times if we know we're going to like cross the whole field for some reason, anything like that, where we just can protect it. It's better if we can fold it up. Um, we end up always having pneumatics on a robot anyway for something. So it's not, it's not a, Oh, we need to add pneumatics just for this. We almost always add them because we like having them for other things. Our climber uses them this year. Um, we might add some other little features later if we need them. Sure. And I didn't uh, mean to interrupt, sure. Felipe. I apologize. So go ahead with uh, the next spot on the robot. Okay. Right, that's all right. Uh, so for ball path, we decided to go with like an S curve this year. Uh, so we have just like large sheets that we'll, we'll laser cut. Um, and then we can like bend. We have like supporting rods in the back that will kind of hold it together in that shape. Um, and it's all just basically spun by a, a single like we'll have like four inch wheels on a single shaft uh so the ball will stay in contact with that roller um throughout the entirety of its path on that curve uh and so that leads us up to the launcher um so we have an adjustable hood this year which is powered by linear servos um on our hood we decided to go with four two inch rollers uh we originally had like a 3d printed hood that we had back there um, but then we ended up switching to, to the two inch rollers. Um, and then our main flywheel is a, is four or they're four inch stealth wheels right now. And the whole thing is just powered by two Falcons. And so the back rollers on the, on the hood, those are, those are live spinning rollers. Yeah. So this belt drives back to this gear and pulley here to drive these two in the opposite direction of the main flywheel, and then they're all belted down. Uh, 
And so those again are also dead axle. So there's a there's a half inch round shaft that doesn't rotate going through the whole thing. And then only the pulleys themselves and the rollers actually spin on there. And are you doing that uh, to try to control spin on the ball? Or are you trying to impart more energy? What's the what's the the thinking or what were the experiments that led you to this design? Um, well, we think less energy on the ball is good. We, we like it floating and going in the thing nicely, in the goal nicely. Um, so I guess this kind of goes back to the original uh, question of like what, like what kind of spin we wanted. So we like had a lot of backspin in the beginning and like a lot of energy on the ball is spinning really fast. Um, and after we tested it, we realized that like less spin is better, I think. Or like we think that less spin is will, will, will stay in the goal nicely. So adding those top rollers like takes away from the backspin and uh, allows it to fly nicer in the same goal. Just to paraphrase what you said there, so the reason why you're not looking at having as much spin is because when it's actually going into the hub, you're worried about it potentially ricocheting or bouncing back out, right? Uh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. So our goal is basically to have as little linear and rotational energy on the ball when it enters the hub. So if every one of our shots can just like arc barely over the rim and not be spinning very much, that's the ideal shot so that it can sit nicely at the bottom. It's not spinning up the walls. It's not hitting the agitator and bouncing out. None of those things. We want to, if we make the shot, we want it to stay made. Fair, fair enough for that. Now I do have to ask Spectrum has been teasing a lot of stuff with climbers and been showing off some cool prototypes and stuff for that. Uh, tell us where you're at right now in regards to your climber and uh, what your plans are for it. Yep. So the climber has basically stayed pretty close to the same from the last working prototype we had. Um, and so we've been working on the next full version. Oh, this is where the, this is where the swerve is in terms of, compl of completion, but we do have um, some more pictures of like the actual, the next swerve or the next climber prototype will be tested. Hopefully before the end of the week, we'll have a control unit on it and it should be able to climb fully, but it has, it'll be Falcon powered and everything. Um, but none of the geometry has really changed much. We're still doing the winch setup. Um, so it all gets, there's a rope that gets tied up near the hook up here. It'll get winched down and it seems to work pretty well to allow us to reach out, grab each rung and uh, yeah, do the full traversal hopefully um, pretty early on in the season. And uh, what are you, uh, so, I mean, I, I watched your prototype videos and checked out the blog. Um, what are you expecting in terms of like the time to, to get all the way to the traversal from when you try to go hang to, to the top? What do you think your timing is on that? Um, that is a good question. So yeah, our goal is to be able to increase that throughout the season. So it's actually, we did some things in the design to allow that. So it's actually catted with four Falcons. We almost certainly won't have four motors powering it at our week one event. Um, but our goal is to be able to try to make the automation and everything more and more and more to get it faster as we're going through the season. My guess going into our week one at Dripping Springs will probably be, hopefully, as long as we can, you know, we hear the 30 second sound, we can get over there lined up and get fully climbed. That'll be good enough for that event, hopefully. But ideally we'll be doing the climb in that 15 to sub 10 by the time we are at the championship. Um, if we can get sub 10, I think we'll be more than good enough compared to the rest of the field. I mean, I, I think if you can do sub 30 as we get into any regional, I think you're going to be in, in pretty good shape or district in your case, I should say. Uh, you're going to be in pretty good shape for something like that to get you into uh, your state championships for sure. Um, something I do yeah, have to ask, you mentioned you're you're going to a week one event, right? So we've seen a lot of CAD. Uh, <laughs> were you in regards to actually like robot assembly or trying to get things together from that perspective? Yeah, so we are took a little bit to do um Felipe, do you want to talk about what we did yesterday um sure so uh i mean it's a lot of 3d printing like alan said earlier so we've been running prints like basically all day and all night um so a lot of the launcher stuff uh we started laser cutting stuff out of um wood oh sorry you want to let me talk about swerve that, that makes sense <laughs> um <laughs> uh swerve we, we constructed the, the the practice bot chassis um yesterday so we have the belly pin on it and the the, the actual swerve there. Um, and then we recently also um, cut another tube that would like is basically the last part of the drivetrain. Um, and we've also cut a lot of uh, wood and stuff for testing launcher, as well as some shafts and lots of 3D printed parts. Um, yeah, so we'll pretty much be manufacturing for the next two weeks to get the practice bot and comp bot ready. Ideally, the uh, practice robot will be brought up with full electronics and everything 
if we're really fast Sunday ish, but we also have the Super Bowl. Um, so probably Monday or Tuesday. And then that next weekend, we should be following it up with bringing up the competition robot um, by around President's Day, hopefully, if we're on schedule. Uh, yeah, we're making everything in house or largely everything in house. We have 3D print, laser cutter for all of our plastic and wood, and then the CNC router to do our tubes and our sheet metal parts as well. Yeah, so so let's uh, let, let's let's talk about that for a little bit because I know that you're traditionally like in the past you've had a lot of sheet metal sponsors and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you're building everything in house this year. So what's the equipment that you're using? Like you've got you. What is your core equipment that enables you to wait till week five to start producing parts? And <laughs> other teams were trying to replicate. I don't know that. wait's the right well, word. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no, we definitely are. We, it definitely is a little bit late. So basically what we're able to do now is we have in our lab, we have about, we have 11 Prusa minis and four other printers. So we're sitting at almost 15 3D printers that we can use. Um, and then in addition to that, we have our um, thunder laser um, laser cutter. So this is how we cut all of our, la our wood and plastic. So we're cutting polycarb and Delarin parts um, and then uh, six millimeter Baltic birch parts as well on here. And then our Shop Saber 23 um, is set up so that we can do our aluminum plate and aluminum tube on a tube jig. We actually updated to the West Coast products one two days ago, which is part of why we were waiting on some things because our tube jig was messed up. But now that's all set. And so we're good there. Um, and then so a lot of it is just getting it and turning and having a lot of people come at different times. So we don't have we also don't have as like rigid of meeting times as other people. So we have a lot of people come at different times, almost like shifts. So we'll have people come in and work from right after school for a couple hours. And then some other people will come after they do track practice or anything like that too. So we have a lot of people come in at different times to be working on our robot throughout the week. And, and Alan, you actually have two teams as well too, right? You have the Photon team is still participating this year. Is that correct? <laughs> we do. Um, so yeah, so we started a second team last season. So team 8515. Um, Photon is our new students building an EveryBot. So they were actually in here working today, getting the intake built up um, in some parts of the arm. So they will be getting ready to go to the week two competition with a hopefully functional EveryBot by that point. <laughs> Well, uh, 3847 uh, Spectrum, once again, uh, looking forward to more things that you're going to be bringing. Uh, once again, uh, if you haven't seen Spectrum's blog, make sure you go check that out uh, at blog.spectrum. I'm sorry, blog.spectrum3847.org. Uh, are these pictures public as well, too, Alan? Yep, the photo gallery is public. It's uh, photos.spectrum3847.org. Perfect on there. And then uh, how about your cat? Is that anything that, that's public or will that get released uh, later on? Uh, yeah, so the cat is public. It's been linked in the blog a couple times. Um, you should be able to go through um, to the, the web address. I don't think there's any short URL right now, but I can probably make one. Um, but yeah, it is, it is fully public um, in terms of whatever on shape link sharing is. I don't know exactly what. I don't think you can just download it all, but you can at least sure. see it all. There's different permission stuff, but it should be fine. Um, if there's something anybody wants, let me know. We can probably make it more public. Yeah. From, from a, as we start to wrap up from a, a process or a progress standpoint, is the CAD pretty much complete on your end, um, at least from a structural standpoint? Um, yeah, I think we're probably 95% done. We are finishing up some intake stuff today. There's a few little things we know we have to change and update as we go on to the competition robot, just as we're assembling the practice robot. But largely everything's complete. Well, we wish you the best of luck, uh, Spectrum, and uh, always great to see your team's progress uh, as we go through. And, and good luck with the week one event, uh, and can't wait to see you guys compete. So thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.